Hello, 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 hello. Come on in the room. Hi there. God wins always. Welcome. Hello, hello, hello. Come on in the room. I've got a quick word. Jesus Somber, good to see you, Mama Sita. How are you? Come on in the room. Come on in the room. If you can hear me okay, please put a one on the screen or a heart so that I know that you can hear me okay. I've got a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. I pray that you have arrived safely to your destination, uh, Christina. We will talk soon. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. I have a word. This is a fixed fight. Yes, we're in Maryland. Woohoo! Praise God. Um, this is a fixed fight. This is a fixed fight. I want to let you know that this is a fixed fight. Um, I have um, just uh, not going to be before you long, but I don't presuppose that everyone who comes in the room knows who I am. And so my name is Tabitha Pittman. I am Prophetess Tabitha Pittman. Um, I am a writer. I am, but most of all, I'm a child of God. I am a life coach. I am a certified life coach. Welcome, Prophetess Tammy. Good to see you. Blessings, blessings, blessings. I pray that all is going well and congratulations on your new home. Um, but blessings, blessings, blessings. This is a, this is going to be a word of encouragement. I pray that it blesses your soul. I pray that it blesses you, blesses your day and encourages you um, to continue to fight, to continue to fight. I was reading my Bible and if someone could just put the scripture on the screen over in Job 1 uh, verses 6 through uh, 11. Um it's Job chapter one, verses six through 11. And um, I'm going to read that real quick, but I want to get right into this word. I won't be before you long. I bless you for spending your Saturday afternoon with me for a few minutes, but I want to encourage you that this is a fixed fight. Thank you so much, Christina. It says, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. I want to let you know today that the devil is going to and fro looking for someone. The Bible talks about it in the New Testament, says he goes to and fro looking, you know, a, a prowling back and forth like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour and he answered God I've been going back and forth and the Lord said to Satan have you considered my servant Job that there is none like him on the earth a blameless and upright man one who fears God and shuns evil. Welcome, Prophet Young. Thank you for joining. Please like, share. Don't be selfish. Please like, share with your followers. This is going to bless you. And I pray that as it blesses you, it will bless someone else. Glory to God. And so I want to let you know that he says, uh, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. So Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household and around all that he has on every side? My God in glory. You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has. And he will surely curse you to your face. He will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, behold, all that he has is in your power, but do not lay a hand on his person. I want to let you know that sounds like fighting words to me. I, I, I'm, I'm not from the hood. I don't want to presuppose that everyone knows who I am or what I'm about, but I want to let you know that I'm from the South and we will get down and dirty. I'll take these earrings off in a heartbeat, but I want to let you know that, that this was fighting words. This was God giving Satan permission to go in and, and start a fight. 
Go in and start the fight. Go in and start the fight. But I want to let you know that it's a fixed fight because you already win. You already win. I, I've got people calling me saying, Tabitha, I'm fighting in my marriage. I'm fighting. I'm fighting in my health. I'm fighting in my home. I'm fighting on my job. I'm fighting, fighting, fighting. But the weapons, according to Ephesians 6, are not in the flesh. It's not, it's not this. The weapons are not in the flesh. We wrestle not against flesh and blood but against powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. So it's not against this. It's not against your husband, your wife. It's not against your coworker. It's not against your neighbor, your friend, your mother-in-law. It's not against none of them. The weapons are in the spirit realm, but it's a fixed fight. You already win. Whenever Satan comes to you, it's because he already knows that he done lost the fight already. He's just trying to get you to give in because if you give in or if you give up, or if you lay down or you throw in the towel, he wins because he got you to forfeit your own blessing. And, and so I want to let you know that this is not just a fight. It is a fight for your faith. Because see, what he tried to do was he tried to get Job to curse God and die. He tried to get Job to forfeit his own blessings, to forfeit his own inheritance and die, curse him and die. Even his wife later on said, why don't you just curse? Because Satan will use anybody. I'll wait. He'll use anybody. He'll use your wife. He'll use your children. He'll use anybody. Anybody is subject to what he has, to his weapons of deception, to his weapons of warfare, and he don't fight fair. So don't come in here expecting a fair fight with Satan. It ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen, period. And, and so this is a fight for your faith. And, and as I was spending some time with God, I, I, you know, I, y'all know I take tedious notes and I was spending some time with God. He says, the enemy wants you to curse God and die. Job was blameless and upright. Some of y'all are blameless and upright. You're living to the best of your ability. You're fighting, you're fasting and you're praying and you're saying, Lord, why me? What, what have I done? Lord, why me? And I'm telling you that, that God has said, you know what? I honor Tammy so much. I honor Prophet Long so much. I honor Prophet Young so much. Have you considered my servant, Prophet Young? Have you considered him? Have you considered him? He's blameless and upright. He's living the best that he can. Yes, I've got a hedge of protection around me, but you know what? I'm going to take that hedge of protection off of him. Just don't touch that person. Don't touch him. You can touch the houses. You can touch the land. Don't touch him. Don't touch him. See, God still has his hands all on you. Don't touch him. Don't touch him. And, and so I said, Lord Jesus, okay, well, help me, Lord. He said, fight your faith unless your faith is a lie. I said, well, God, my faith ain't a lie. I'm going through, but my faith ain't a lie. Lord, I believe you from Genesis to Revelations. I believe what your word says, Lord. I believe it. I stand on it. I believe what your word says. He said, well, then fight. Fight. How do we fight? We fight on our knees. We fight in prayer. Hallelujah. Shend to get a little well shot. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. And that means that we have to continue to fight, even when it don't look like a victory. You better fight. You better put your dukes up, like they would say back in the day. You better put your dukes up. You better come ready to war. You better have your loins girded up, ready to fight the good fight. Ready to fight. Because it's already fixed. All you got to do is stay in the ring. All you got to do is put your dukes up. All you got to do is keep praying, keep fasting, keep speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. I want to thank you today because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so even that, even as you listen to the word of God, it's encouragement to you. It's edification to your spirit, man, that you would continue to stay in the fight. Fight the good fight. We fight the good fight of faith. Why? Why are we fighting it? Because we know that without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we have to keep fighting. We have to. And we know also that according to 1 Peter 5 and 9, but resist him because firm is your faith. 
Oh, thank you so much for the shout out on the book. You know what? I'm going to take this moment just to pause because you got me excited, sis. Thank you. I want to let you know that you can go to Magnetic Woman, you know, shameless plug. Go to MagneticWomanCoaching.com and get your copy of the ebook. There's also a... a um, paperback book that's available and it is 21 days to regaining your power 21 days to regaining your power there's a blessing that you need to be girded up and, and you need to be encouraged and motivated that book i wrote it in 21 days as god had me in a place for 21 days hallelujah if some of y'all know the story where daniel was waiting and he was waiting for his blessing he had asked god for something that's not my message today glory but my sister prophetess tammy brought that up and so i want to just let you know that that's that's where that was birthed from it was birthed from a place of asking God for 21 days Lord help me Lord show me Lord if I'm going through then maybe somebody else is going through and needs to be encouraged while they wait for the blessing to come down maybe the prince of Persia has held your blessing hostage maybe that's you if that's you I encourage you today to go and get the book but one to keep pressing in don't give up and don't give in because your blessing is right on the edge you're right there and satan knows it many people give up right before their breakthrough yes it's not a breakup it's a breakthrough satan wants you to he wants you to break up he wants you to fall back he wants you to break but God is trying to get you to break through, keep pressing, keep moving forward, keep going forward, keep giving your all because God sees you because he is the God who sees. If he saw Hagar, who was who was Ishmael's mother, right? She was she was the concubine to to Abraham while Abraham and, and Sarah were trying to get it right. God sees you, too. He sees what you're going through and, and he wants us to be like Jacob. Don't give up. I won't let go until you bless me. And that's the place where that book was birthed from. I was, I was birthing that. I was going through the labor pain saying, Lord, I'm not going to let go until you bless me. Right now I'm on a 21 day fast. Glory to God. I'm not saying this to, to, to be like the pagans, but to let you know that 21 days is a special place in God. 21 days. 21 is a special place in God. If you've been seeing that number, God wants to do something. He wants to break through in the spirit realm for you. Don't give up. Keep pressing in. Glory to God. Keep pressing in. I want to also let you know that your faith will work itself out in the struggle. The faith that you have, it doesn't have to be much. The size of the head of this pen is all the faith that you need. The faith, the size of a mustard seed. A mustard seed is a very tiny thing, but your faith will work itself out in the midst of the struggle. That's where God gets the glory. That's where God, if you will keep pressing in, if you will keep working your faith in the midst of that, that's where God will get the glory. That's where he will, he will cause you to come into a greater faith. Oh, faith, faith, the size of the mustard seed can move a mountain. Faith, just a little bit. That faith will work itself out. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, it says, uh, that we are saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Your faith is a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift that Satan doesn't have. That's why he's fighting you. That's why he's fighting you. He's fighting you because he's already, he's already lost. He's already, you know, I don't know if any of y'all remember, maybe some of y'all are, are, are my age and y'all remember the days of Tyson. I was, I was a young bird, but I'm just saying that Tyson went into that ring with Holyfield and that's a name all in of itself. He went into that ring with Holyfield. He was losing. He was losing. And so what did he do? I'm not calling Mike Tyson Satan by any means but he went into that ring and when he started to lose the fight he bit him on the ear he bit him on the ear that was an illegal illegal he touched this person he lost the fight he lost the fight but he knew he was losing he knew he was in a position where he couldn't win he knew that he hadn't prepared right he hadn't lived right he hadn't trained right 
He was losing. It was already, he, he, there was no way he could win. Satan is the same way. Unless Holyfield were to, Evander Holyfield were to throw in the towel, there was no way that he was going to win that fight. That, say, that Mike Tyson was going to win the fight unless Evander forfeited. It's the same way with you in the spirit realm. If you don't forfeit, you win. You win every single solitary time. You win. I'm telling you today that you win. You win with Jesus Christ. He already paid the price. He already set it up for you. It's a fixed fight. Baby, you win. You win this every single time. All you do is win, 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 no matter what. No matter what. You know, I, I spoke the other week about focus. As long as you keep your focus on God, it's like Peter. When Peter stepped out of that boat, good afternoon, good to see you. When Peter stepped out of that boat to walk on the water, he said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. And he stepped out. And as long as he kept his focus on Jesus, he was walking on water. He was doing what Jesus did. He was walking in faith. He was walking with God and in God. As long as he kept his focus on on God, as long as he kept his faith in Christ. And it's the same thing with you. As long as you keep your focus on God, you win. But let me tell you what, when you look at the wind, because it says when the wind that he looked and he saw that the wind was raging, the wind was chaotic. Sometimes in life, things get chaotic. Things, things, things seem out of your control. It seems like the wind is going to overtake you. It looks like that sometimes. I'm a living, walking testimony. I ain't sitting here because I ain't been through something. I'm speaking from experience. And I want to let you know that you win with Jesus. And as long as you keep your eyes focused on him, you win. But when you look at the wind, can somebody put that on the screen? When you look at the wind, you can't win. If you look at the wind, you can't win. When you look at the wind, that's when Peter started to sink. When he looked at the wind. That's when he that's when he lost his focus. That's when he lost his determination looking at the wind. There, that's that's Satan. Satan wants to distract you. But you got to dominate your distractions. You got to turn out the white noise. You got to turn out the family members. You got to turn out, tune out the naysayers. When you look at the wind, you cannot win. You can't win looking at the wind. And, and so you got to tune some people out. You got to tune them out. If they are if they, the negative Nancy's tune them out. I ain't saying you got to cut everybody off, but you got to not let that thing take root in your spirit. Period. You've got to stay focused on Jesus. The Bible says, if you keep your mind stayed on Christ, you will be in perfect peace. That, that's what the word of the Lord says in Isaiah. If you keep your mind stayed on him, he'll keep you in perfect peace. Perfect peace comes from focusing on God. It comes from keeping your faith in Christ. That's where your peace is. That's where your joy is. Keeping your faith in God. That's how you win the fight. Keeping your faith in God. I'm going to try to get back to my notes, but the Holy Spirit will do what he wants to do. And I'm, I'm just radical enough in my faith to say, have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way with me today. Have your way. Because you know what? God is sovereign and he's going to do what he want to do anyways. He's sovereign, y'all. But he's not going to let you be touched, even though Satan has been given a, 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 a jurisdiction, if you will, to come in and, and wreak some havoc on your life. Keep fighting the fight of faith. This is a faith fight and the fight is yours. The fear you are facing is real. The facts you are facing are real. I know that's not the most popular thing to say, but it's the truth. The fear is real. The facts are real. But guess what? We serve a real God. Your faith is real. Your faith is really, it's, it's not a political agenda. It's, it's not a, a Corona agenda. The fact of the matter is your faith is what's at hand. Your faith is what you're fighting for. Your faith is what they're trying to get you, get you to, to waver in. You can't go to church like you used to. You don't have that fellowship with the saints like you used to. It's your faith. 
Satan is a sneaky liar. And every time he comes in the room, you got to know he lying. The Bible says he is a liar. He's the father of lies. And I don't care if he sprinkled it with a little bit of truth. It's still a lie. Because if it ain't the whole truth, it's a lie. It's a lie. If it ain't the whole truth, it's a lie. Deception is the weapon of the enemy and he will use it to lie to you and to lie to others. Satan is a liar and the father of lies. So every time doubt comes in your mind, it's a lie. It's a lie. It's from Satan. Doubt, not discernment. Discernment is from the Holy Spirit. Doubt is from the devil. He wants to get you in a place of doubt. When you doubt, you you doubt, you miss out on your blessings. You doubt and it causes you to second guess. Ah, Shandike. The Holy Spirit would even say that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That's because doubt has crept into your mind and caused you to doubt Christ. That's Satan working against you. He's working against you. He wants you to doubt. He wants you to fear. He wants you to live in that place. You know what? You can call fear what it is and speak the word to that thing. Because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. So, so call it out. Anytime that doubt comes in your mind, you've got to say, no. The word says in Timothy that God has not given me a spirit of fear but of love, power, and the sound mind. You got to speak the word to it. And I want to let you know that, that all of this is an assault on your faith. It's an assault on your family. It's an assault on your finances. It's an assault on your ministry. It's an, it's an all out fight. An assault ain't nothing more than another word for fight. I don't know about y'all, but I ain't ready to throw in the towel on my faith. I ain't ready to throw on the towel on my marriage. I'm not going to let no devil in hell come and disturb my family. I'm not, I know what the statistics say about if you divorce in the, the position that your children and your family about to be in, your, your wife or your ex and your children going to be vulnerable to the wiles and the whims of the devil because those statistics are real. But your faith already wins. So you got to keep fighting. You know, somebody told me the other day, uh, I was checking on people. You know, you got to check on people in this pandemic because even though things are easing up a little bit, people are still in a state of, of, of uh, depression. They're still in a sunken place because they've been shaking a bit. They don't have all the tools and resources that we used to have available to us. And, and so I would say that to say this. Keep checking on people. Keep checking on them. I was checking on a young man, and and actually he's he's older than me, but I was checking on him, and I said, you know, how are you? He's you know a newlywed. His his wife just moved. Uh, well, when they got married, you know, she moved here from another state and whatnot. And uh, you know, he said, I'm hanging on. I'm hanging on, prophetess. I'm hanging on. I said, what you mean you hanging on? He said, well, you know, you know. It's an adjustment, you know. Uh, let me tell you this. Hanging on implies that you just barely got a grip. If I hang on to this paper, I ain't no more got control of this paper than a man on the moon, my grandma would say. But when you hold on to it, you grab firm to it. You hold on to your faith. Hold on. Hold on in Christ. You hold on and can't, things can't just fall through your hands if you're holding on to them. You got to keep clutched on. You know, in, in your marriage, you got to cleave. Cleave don't mean that you're just barely gripping it. Oh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just hanging on, just hanging on by a string, Sister Tabitha. No, no, put some bass in your voice and hold on to that thing. Hold on in the storms, hold on in the trials, hold on in the tribulations. You know what? You've got to get in a place. I don't know if y'all can hear my soaking music right now, but you know what? My, my husband took the kids and they went off for a ride. And that allowed me to get into a place where I could soak and spend time with God. Where I could say, Lord, I'm going to hold on. I'm going to keep holding on. If you'll give me the strength to run this race, I'm going to hold on. I'm going to hold on to you, Jesus. Because in Christ is the fullness of glory. When I get in that secret place, when I get in that place, I can hold on. 
Ain't nobody got to gotta keep pushing me. I ain't got to have itching words for I need a word right now. I need an encouragement right now. I can get in my Bible and I can hold on to that. I can hold on to the word. I can be strengthened in my faith. I can gird up my loins. Yes, if you hold on to your faith because the fight is already fixed. You already win. You win. Prophetess Gabriel, you win. Prophetess, I'm sorry, Prophet Gabriel, Prophetess Tammy, you win. Evangelist Christina, you already win. You win with Christ Jesus. You win. I'm just a mouthpiece today. I'm just a mouthpiece that when God would say, you know, I tried to give this word yesterday and and, and it was like, it, it kept going back and forth. I said, man, what in the world? And it, the volume was messing up and people couldn't hear me. And I said, the devil is a liar. But God said, you know what? Come back. And he gave me some more. He gave me some more. He said, you must fight because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You got to keep fighting. You know, my auntie, she asked me one day, she said, you know, I, I feel like some days that you are stronger in your faith and you younger than me. And I said, auntie, you know what? It, it's not about age. And I, and I told her, I said, you know, because she said, well, when is this fight ever going to be up? I said, when you take your last breath, that's what it's going to be up. I said, but because we got to keep fighting, we got to keep fighting. And I told her, I said, but be encouraged because Jesus already won. And he sits at the right hand of the father, constantly making intercession for us. That's why there's, it's a blessing to be an intercession because we, we, we are going to Jesus as he goes to the father and he's pleading our case. Even when Satan is coming to the courts, Satan come to the courts like, no, I got a file law and prophet and he did this. Satan, Satan is a liar. He's a liar. And, and no matter what, you've been washed with the blood of Jesus. You've been washed. You've been cleansed. You've been purged. Every time you ask for forgiveness, the blood of Jesus covers you again. The blood of Jesus keeps you in right standing. Every time you take communion, I know we're coming up on communion. But I encourage you that you don't have to wait till the first Sunday of the month to take communion. Take communion. Jesus said in Luke 22, do this in remembrance of me. You can do that as often as you need to. You can do that as often as you please. Do this in remembrance of Jesus. Do this because without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so I want to be in, I want to just be a, a word of encouragement today. I want to be that voice. You know, um, uh, First Kings talks about how it wasn't in the earthquake and it wasn't in the wind, but it was in the still small voice. When God starts talking to you by faith, you've got to hear that still small voice. I just want to be a mouthpiece because I can't afford to have blood on my hands like Ezekiel talked about. And so I just got to be a mouthpiece today. I have to be faithful and I have to be obedient to do what God said do. And so I want to encourage you that you already overcome. All you've got to do is resist the devil. I'm telling you, he will flee. I'm going to just wrap this up with prayer, but I encourage you to share with your followers again. Share. Don't be selfish. Don't be stingy. Share with your followers. Bless somebody. Bless somebody today. Fight for your faith. Faith without a test does not produce a testimony. And without faith, again, it's impossible to please God. Without faith. You know, I, I, I don't trust faith that hasn't been tested. You know, I heard Prophet uh, Rudico Roberts say that, and it just really pierced my spirit. Faith without a test will not produce a testimony. You've got to pass the test. Your faith is the test. Your faith is being tested right now. Pass the test. So brothers and sisters, I bless you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for each and every one who would catch the replay. I pray that their faith will be strengthened right now in this moment. I pray that you will give them this word, that it will penetrate their spirit, Father, that it will be as a peg in a sure place, Father. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for blessing each and every one of them, that they will have the strength to run on and see what the end is going to be. I thank you, Lord, for their faith being encouraged. I thank you, Lord, for you 
using me right now, Lord, to encourage somebody, to edify and uplift and comfort and exhort them, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for this word that you have given me. I thank you, Lord, that you add the increase to your word, Lord Jesus. I thank you that your word cannot return void. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, that you are the author and the finisher of their faith, Father. And so I bless them right now. I command a blessing upon this word in the name of Jesus. I pray that you bless them and bless them indeed. Enlarge their territory, Father, as they exercise and apply this word, Father. In the name of Jesus, I ask and pray all these things. If you have been blessed by this word, please like and share. Please subscribe to this channel. Please, 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 I encourage you even to go out to MagneticWomanCoaching.com and get the book. It will bless you. It will encourage you. It is a daily dose of encouragement for your soul. It is It is even daily manna, if I can, Lord Jesus, I thank you. It is daily manna for you to be encouraged and uplifted. So I will see you all next time. I will be back uh, later um, as the Holy Spirit allows me to release this next word that he is already preparing in my spirit. And, and so I thank you that as I research and I, I come before you, that you keep me uplifted in prayer and I'll be praying for all of you. I love you all so much. God bless you and stay magnetic. Mwah.